Uh, Maggie is in Liverpool. Hello, Maggie. My question is, I'm a long-serving member of British Airways crew, and as we all know at the moment, the airlines are suffering greatly because of COVID and the downturn in global traffic on the airlines. Um, for British Airways particularly, I can't speak for any other airline, um, their plans are on the 15th of June to sack 42,000 of their employees and rehire them the next day on inferior terms and conditions, up to 65% wage drop. Um, for 12,000 people, they will be made permanently redundant, but for the other 30,000, they'll be given a choice, 100% uh, wage drop or 65% wage drop. Uh, at the moment, the clock's been ticking. Uh, it could be 45 days on, the, on June the 15th, and there's been no meaningful consultation um, with elected represent representatives of the union. Um, so where do we stand in all of that? Are they allowed to do it? Under what conditions are they allowed to change terms and conditions? All right, so there's two separate issues here. There's the issue of, of adequate consultation and the issue of can they impose changes to your terms and conditions. I'm going to deal with the second one first. Can they impose changes to terms and conditions? The short answer, and it's, it's not an attractive answer to a lot of people, but it, it's what the law says, is that just as you can't be compelled to work for an employer if you don't want to work for them anymore... Mm -hmm. An employer can't be compelled to continue employing you if it doesn't want you to work for it anymore. Now, there's a big exception to that, which is that if you've worked for more than two years, they're not allowed to dismiss you if the dismissal would be unreasonable or unfair. So the, the question is, is it unreasonable or unfair to dismiss 30-odd uh, thousand people and then rehire them the next day on inferior terms and conditions? And generally, courts take the view that if a business can show it's in crippling financial trouble and it can't survive <laughs> unless it makes a 65% cut to salary and makes 12,000 people redundant, then it will be reasonable as long as it tries to negotiate, as long as it tries to consult, and as long as it goes through the correct procedures to dismiss and then offer to rehire. Because the alternative is that nobody will have a job a few weeks later because the company can't survive. So as, as long as there is some level of consultation, a tribunal is likely to say that it is legal to dismiss and rehire you on lower terms with the caveat that if you're dismissed you get your notice pay so you you wouldn't be left without a penny you'd get your notice pay on your 100 percent level of salary but no more than that no ongoing salary in terms Just of a quick the question to interject there so that decision would be taken retrospectively after you've been uh, i guess dismissed and it would be assessed by, by an employment tribunal about 12 to 18 months afterwards. And then because of the amount of money involved with the airlines, it would probably take a few years to go up the appeal ladder as well. So what I, what I understand that you were saying was that if they can prove that they're in dire need to be able to do that, then, of course, the judge would re deem that reasonable um, conditions to uh, fire and rehire you on less favourable terms and conditions. So you've lost your job. 18 months later, a judge rules that, you know, the company's got £9 billion cash reserves. How is it reasonable, apart from a projected, uh, which everybody knows this word keeps get, gets banded around a lot these days, is it, we're in precedent, unprecedented times. So how can anybody make a reasonable forecast of what the upturn is going to be like? Um, you know, we're coming out of it a lot, in my, my eyes, we're coming out of it a lot um, quicker than I expected to. So... Retrospectively, we've lost, you've lost your job, and then a judge deems that it's not reasonable to have changed your terms and conditions. But you haven't got your job back, and then you've lost your house, and you've lost you your haven't, family. You haven't got your job back, Maggie, but if that's the case, then you'd get, your, you'd get an unfair dismissal award of up to a year's salary. Now, of course, that's not yeah. going to replace... Um, your house and your family. Of course it's not, and no one's going to pretend that it can. But what's the alternative? And unfortunately, courts can only award money. They can't award houses, they can't award no, families. I don't, yeah. I don't mean to sound trite, but 
but no, no, I, no. I'm just looking at it from a very black and white point of view. But can I can I move on? Because you did ask me a lot of stuff, and I want to move on, Maggie, to the second okay. question, you asked, which was about what happens if the company doesn't engage in meaningful consultation with the union. The answer to that is very simple. Uh, they can be ordered to pay up to 13, one, three weeks pay to every affected employee. That's all 42,000 of you. And that's a huge amount of money, three months salary to 42,000 people. But just because, and I'm being blunt here, just because you don't think it's meaningful doesn't mean a judge wouldn't think it's meaningful. The purpose of meaningful consultation is to give the unions uh, enough information so they have a fair opportunity to respond and make constructive suggestions and to listen with an open mind to those suggestions. Meaningful consultation does not mean you have to do what the employees and the union want. So, there may be meaningful consultation even in circumstances where you don't necessarily think it's as meaningful as you'd want it to be. Does that make sense, Maggie? It does make sense. Uh, at the moment, we've got a proposal on the table, which is uh, nonsense to everybody. Uh, that you know, So meaningful comfort, who decides whether it's meaningful or not? Because if a company wants to impose something and the union says, well, unless you're willing to listen to what other ideas we have in terms of this crisis, because nobody's saying that we shouldn't help out, but unless you're willing to listen to that, um, where does meaningful come into it? Well, meaningful is about is about making the information available to the unions, letting the unions make positive suggestions for a period of forty five days minimum, and uh, and listening to what the union suggests with an open mind. It doesn't necessarily mean agreeing with the union, because the union is arguing a position on behalf of its employees, and the union's interests are the employees' interests, not the business's interests. The business but, but has. But how to can how can you? Pr- Sorry, how, how can, can you, you prove that an employer has had an open mind and has listened? Well, it's, it's not easy, but what a judge will do is exactly what a judge does every day of every week of every year, which is look at what they're told, look at the documents, look at what people say in the witness box and take a decision as to whether they think it's meaningful. You use the word prove. You can never prove something categorically, but a judge can no. look at what's happened and say, yeah, I think they were giving the union a fair chance at changing our minds. Or the judge can say, no, I think they had a completely closed mind, weren't interested, and there was no meaningful consultation. Not, it's, not easy to arrive at, it's not easy to arrive at a decision, but it's perfectly possible to arrive at one. Yeah, and, and, and I think that is, I think that's uh, person, per, perfectly reasonable. And actually, I think that makes perfect sense. But if you're trying to talk to somebody who won't talk to you, or vice versa, on both both sides, then you can't have a meaningful conversation. Con- so then what happens to the 45 days? It's running down, the clock's running down, the clock's running down. What happens if there's no meaningful consultation in those 45 days? On the 45th day, the employer can just say, you're terminated. Well, if there's no meaningful consultation in the 45 days, the union can get what's called a protective award, uh, which is um, 13 weeks compensation for every single employee. There's got to be meaningful consultation throughout the 13 weeks. That doesn't mean every day, Maggie, but it just means a reasonable amount of meaningful consultation. I can't tell you what meaningful consultation looks like between the airline and the unions it's negotiating with, because it's, uh, it's, it's something that's vexing some of the brightest minds in the country and i don't know enough about it to give you and i'm one of them uh, you are you do sound like you're one of them um but but it's 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 one of those things, I am it's, an to it. it's an elephant you know it when you see it it's just very difficult to define okay but it was you, you see helpful. i think my I think, Maggie, you've been you've been so brilliant in the case that you, you've put. I think you might have a career as a, a radio presenter. You never know. <laughs> I'd rather go into politics, but there you go. <laughs> would you? I was, thinking, I was thinking you yes, being I questioned would. by Maggie is like being questioned by the Court of Appeal. <laughs> well, all I can say is that <laughs> if, 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 if you live in live. If you live in Liverpool, Maggie, it's probably best not to go into Conservative politics, I would possibly suggest, but um, I won't ask you what your politics are. Thank you very much for a great call. Um, and I think what Maggie said there, she she was talking on behalf of thousands of British Airways employees because we know that we've been speaking to them. And as I say, we are going to hopefully get a senior uh, member of the British Airways management to come and take calls next week or the week after. My people are talking to their people, so we'll see what what the result of that is.